Hello, in this tutorial we are going to show you how to set up and create a SFML project on Windows using Visual Studio. If you want to set it up on Mac and use Xcode, don't worry, we've got you covered. We've got a video covering that, so feel free to head on over to that one. If you're still listening to me, chances are you're going to, you are interested in the Windows side of things. So, First thing you want to make sure is that you've got Visual Studio installed. It supports quite a lot of versions of Visual Studio. I'll just recommend 2015. That's the one that I use and that is the one that is supported. 2017 is out now. It should work with 2017, but 2015 definitely works and there are library files for 2015. So obviously again, like, like I said, make sure you've got Visual Studio installed. Once you've got that installed, go to your browser go to sfml-dev.org there'll be a link to that in the description go to download go to the latest stable version which for me is 242 if it's a newer version don't worry that will be fine as well and from here you want to get the correct visual studio version so i've got 2015 so you want to download 2015 you can either download 32 bit or 64 bit even if you're on a 64-bit operating system, you can still develop for 32-bit and using 32-bit. It's just if you're on a 32-bit operating system, you can't develop for and test 64-bit applications. I will recommend, unless you specifically need more than 2 or 3 gigabyte of RAM, use 32-bit and you will be golden. Just ensures maximum compatibility. So once you've got that downloaded, which I already do have, you want to extract the folder, so just extract it using the view the built-in Windows extraction tool or WinRAR, which is what I'm using, or something like 7-zip. And within here, you got a folder called SFML, and all of these fold folders will be inside. I'm just going to rename this folder S just SFML, let the version, because we'll be linking to this and it'll be a lot easier instead of typing in SFML-2.4.2, SFML will just be, well, a lot easier. So next, what you want to do, anywhere on your computer, create a folder and this will be your project directory, essentially, or your project bundle, which will include your SFML library. So I'm going to put SFML group. I'm going to name it that SFML group. In here, create a new folder new folder call this external libraries in here is where you want to place your sfml folder so just copy it over or move it either one is fine so once you've copied or moved over the sfml folder into external libraries you want to create a new visual studio command prompt application here so just open up visual studio and once it's loaded up, click New Project. Select Win32 Console Application under Win32 under Visual C++. You select this and it's saying install the tools. Just click on it and install the tools. So again, just Win32 Console Application. I'm just going to name this SFML Template. Click Browse. Go to wherever you created this folder. So within here, this is when you're going to create your project. Make sure you create directory for solution. Click OK. You'll get this application wizard. Click Next. Select console application. Empty project. Deselect security development lifecycle. Click Finish. And now what you want to do is actually create a file a cpp file and you need this before we even start coding because when we go into project properties and link up sfml there is a section missing called cc plus plus properties and as you can see it's not here but if we actually create a file a cpp file visual studio then knows what sort of project you are that it's dealing with so if i call it main main.cvp, if I right click properties and then go to, if I go to C, C++, go to general and as you can see C, C++ has now appeared. So what you want to do is now link it up to your, well, project. To do that 
you just want to go to C, C++, General, make sure all configurations are selected. Just select either Win32 or 64, depending on which one you downloaded. So I downloaded Win32, 32-bit, so that's the one I've selected. In general, go to Additional Include Directories, click Edit, click New. You don't want to click the three dots. You want to type in dollar, op open some brackets, and in here, for solution, DIR, and what this does, it refers to this directory here where the .sln file is. And what we want to do is go back a directory, and by using dot, I mean dollar solution dir, it's always relative to this folder here. No matter where we move into the computer, with the C drive, D drive, H drive, or on a different computer, into documents, desktop, doesn't matter. This will always create the path that it needs to. It will essentially just get this appropriate path to it. So you do four slash dot 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 four slash because remember we're going back one. Then we are going into external libraries, then for slash sfml, for slash include. So what we're doing is linking up the sfml folder and we are getting the include folder, which has all of the sfml files, the code files. And what I'll say, one last thing, just copy this because we are going to be needing to do something very similar for the lib folder, so it'd be just easy if we copy it instead of typing it out again and again. Click OK, go to linker, general, additional library directories, click the drop down, click edit, now click new, just paste it into here, replace include with lib, click OK, and now in input, go to additional dependencies, click the drop down, click edit, and now what you need to do is add some of these dependencies. You need to add the sfml-audio, you need to add the sfml graphics, the main, the network, the system and windows. So what you want to do is sfml-audio-d.lib. You want to do sfml dash graphics dash d dot lib sml dash I think it's window dash d dot lib then sfml dash network dash d dot lib sml dash system dash d dot lib actually I made a mistake you don't need the main you just need audio graphics network system and window so once you've done all of that the d refers to debug so this is okay for the debug mode the debug configuration but not the release configuration but once you've done this click ok and now if you go to release oh, i didn't save it so make sure you save it it says d but you can just easily go into here get rid of the dash and voila we have our project now set up. So if I click apply, okay, so now if I start coding for SFML, I can just do hash, include, angle brackets, SFML, as you can see it picks it up, put graphics.hpp, I'm gonna create a simple blank window, and instead of, ignore that, that'll just disappear. Instead of backslash to forward slash, Backslash works fine for Windows, but it's Windows only. For slash ensures cross-platform compatibility on stuff like Unix-like kernel-based machines. So always do for slash, just as a general rule. Put int main, and in here, I'm gonna do ff render window, which essentially is going to be a window, almost like this Visual Studio window, that the user will see instead of a console. And I'm gonna call it window. Now we're going to construct it and it takes in something called a SF video mode. And this takes two parameters. The first being the width and the height of our application. So, I mean, the first being the width, the second being the height. So I'm going to put 1024 and then comma 1024. You can put these into hash defines if you want. I'm just going to leave it like this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it into hash defines. Probably be a good thing. So, do put hash define screen 
underscore width for hash define screen underscore height. I remember we put something at the end 1024, 1024. So this will be a square. So if I put screen underscore width here and then screen underscore height, then afterwards you merely want to put some quotation marks and this will be the title of your window aka what appears here for Visual Studio. So I'm going to say awesome SFML and now you just want to do while window dot is open. So while it's open you want to run this. So this will handle your events, your any sort of input you got from the user like keyboard events, mouse events, any update to the game logic. So let's say based on your event. So if the user clicks the left key, the update logic could be move the player left and then he will handle the drawing as well to the window. So first you would handle events, which for Windows isn't actually required. You don't have to handle any events to get the application running. It's recommended that you do handle some basic events such as clothing, for example. We'll cover that in separate videos and there's plenty of documentation online covering that as well. Next, you would update game logic. And then finally, you would draw. And so for this, you would do, first of all, you need to clear off the old contents from the window. So window.clear, then, you do window dot display so you display the new contents and in between here is where you draw SFML objects and that's it the last thing we're going to do is the return exit underscore success save it run it let's see what we get okay fantastic it crashed you might be thinking why is that fantastic and that is because we've got past the compilation stage. That was successful. This DRL is missing. I knew this was going to happen. I purposely didn't add the DRL file. So I wanted you to see this error. What happens? Because if you come across it at a later date, you might be thinking, oh, you've done everything and you might forget this one little step. So all you have to do to fix this is go to your SFML folder, go to bin, copy these dll files now go to your project go to sfml template where your cpp files are paste it here and if i run it again as you can see there was no errors and our application launched so it's that simple to create and launch an application on windows using visual studio if you have any questions feel free to post them on my edu educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a GitHub link, which will take you to the GitHub page, obviously, which will have the source code from every part of this series, and it will have the, the template for Visual Studio and for Mac, so you can just download it, and it will just automatically work so you can bypass all this setup process or if you just really need it and you've lost it you can just re-download it and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day